guys, this is uh, Halfway broadcasting from Phenomenal Pen Cambodia. What's going on, everybody? Uh, so, we're going to talk about a few things in this video. Uh, the first one is you probably saw from the intro uh, all the Christmas stuff up. Uh, so, it's December now. Today is December 7th. So, it's officially, you know, Christmas season. I guess technically, Christmas season starts a little bit earlier, like the whole holiday season. Um, but uh, I don't know. I, I, again, as I've spoken about so many times, I don't really like celebrate holidays or anything anyway, but um, I don't really start recognizing like Christmas time until December anyway. And even uh, like after Halloween was over, I did a lot of stuff with my students for Halloween or like, you know, showed them like the Nightmare Before Christmas and Halloween movies. We made a lot of Halloween decorations. And then after Halloween, they kept asking me like, let's do Christmas stuff, let's do Christmas stuff, like all through November. I was just like, no, 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 we will not do anything with Christmas, with Christmas until uh, December. Uh, so now we started making some like Christmas decorations and stuff, so that's been kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, so in case you're wondering, so Christmas is obviously an international holiday. A lot of people celebrate Christmas. Uh, here it's not like a public holiday or anything or a national holiday. Um, so it's likely or it's possible that you will work on Christmas if you come here. It depends on your school. I've heard of schools that give off the teachers for Christmas. Uh, unfortunately, my school does not, uh, as well as a lot of schools don't, but some schools definitely do. So it's kind of, you know, hit or miss whether you have off for Christmas or not. Um, some schools even give like a decent like week break for Christmas. So, you know, it, again, it just depends on the school that you work at. Uh, but although it's like not a national holiday or a public holiday, people still know what it is. And like you see in the, uh, the opening video, there's a lot of like stores. Uh, and even like schools and stuff that will put up like Christmas decorations and they'll play Christmas music and they'll have Christmas trees. Um, so they have a rough understanding of, you know, the Christmas holiday, at least to some extent. Um, and like my school will have a Christmas party, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so Christmas is a thing here. It's not as big as a lot of, you know, the local holidays, obviously. Um, but you know, it exists here. Also my hair, you might notice my hair is short. I, uh, I took uh, on a video last week, uh, I took like a little poll to see how I should get my next haircut, if I should just uh, get it trimmed or keep growing it or shave it very short, and the overwhelming majority was to uh, go see, shave it short, so that's what I did. Uh, that's kind of what I want to do anyway, so I'm glad you guys voted that way. But I literally would have done whatever the, whatever the vote was I would have went with. Uh, but yeah, so I got my haircut, and actually I found a place uh, across the streets, like right across the street from my school, and it just opened up, and by far they've given me the best haircut in Phnom Penh that I've had, uh, in terms of the experience, um, and like they actually used like, like a real razor blade and like really like edged everything and did all the details and around my beard and trimmed my beard. Uh, so that was two dollars, it was uh, uh, it's a dollar and a half for a regular haircut, but then they also did my beard, so it was another two thousand real. Uh, so I brought to 8,000 real, just $2 for a haircut. Not too bad, right? And uh, what else do I want to talk about in this video? So guys, a lot of times when I'm making videos, like I'll come up with like an idea really quick before I'm making a video, and then I'll kind of just try to talk about it. And uh, sometimes I go off topic, sometimes I don't. But maybe just little things. I'm just thinking about like little things that happen in my day. So let's just talk about like little things sometimes. Uh, so like I mentioned, I don't really speak much Khmer, which is, uh, again, I should, every time I say this, I'm always like, I should really speak more Khmer, and then I don't do anything about it to learn more Khmer. Uh, one day I'll hire a tutor, I promise. One day I'm gonna hire a Khmer tutor and uh, get pretty proficient at it. One day. <laughs> um, Facebook messages popping up, go away, yo. All right, so, a uh, little thing. So, like I said, I don't really speak much Khmer. So, like, today I was at lunch, and I always go to the same little place. It's like the mom runs it, and then she has, uh, there's like a daughter and a son that live there, and then the one daughter lives there with her son, and she usually works, but on Thursdays, she, she, uh, she often has a day off on Thursdays, so she'll be like there. So like her and the mom are like sitting next to me and they're speaking only Khmer. And it's kind of nice because I just, sometimes I just don't feel like talking to anybody and I just want to eat my lunch and like not talk to people. And then sometimes I do, but whatever. But it was kind of cool because they're having a conversation and I can just eat my lunch and I didn't feel like obligated to like, you know, listen to the conversation or join in the conversation uh, or anything in any way because I can't speak Khmer. So that's like the one advantage of not speaking Khmer. Although, 
if I was around people that didn't know me, I could pretend not to speak Khmer. But that's something I'm definitely gonna do. When I when I do learn Khmer, I will learn Khmer eventually. And when I do, I'm not gonna tell anybody that I know Khmer. Literally, I'm not gonna tell anybody. And I will just listen to what Khmer people say when they think you don't understand what they're saying. Uh, maybe I already know Khmer and I'm trying to play a trick on my Khmer friends. <laughs> that's not true. Uh, <laughs> but I'm, that's uh, I will do that when I learn it. And other little things. So obviously here, traffic's like a little bit crazy. Uh, if anybody, you know, if you live here, especially, you know, like, it has a flow to it and it makes sense, kind of, but it's a little bit crazy. But there's, like, little things that annoy me. So there'll be, like, a car that's, like, backing out into the road and trying to turn around. There's, like, you know, millions of motos. And everybody just tries to sneak their little path around the back of the car. So the car slowly can barely get out. And then it's, like, halfway in the middle of the road and traffic's all blocked up. And then anytime there's, like, the smallest little millimeter, another car, another uh, moto, you know, will try to sneak past it. But like, I try to like just angle myself and just wait for the car to pull out. Because I think people don't realize like, if you just stop and you wait four seconds for the car to pull out and leave, it's gonna do less damage overall than the whole like lane getting bottlenecked. And it just, to me, it just seems so obviously, like so obvious that just, hey, the car's already halfway out. Just stop for one second, wait for the car to continue its three point turn and drive away, then all the traffic can move. Um, but I just feel like people don't get that. And then even, it annoys me too, like, the other day I was driving to work and, you know, I'm on my moto with all the other motos, and there's this guy with, like, his baby, and he's trying to cross the road, he's, like, halfway across the road, and, like, everybody's just weaving around him, so, like, I get, like, you know, gradually get to him and, like, slow down, I feel like all the motos behind me got mad, but just let the guy with his baby, like, get across the street, like, it'll take you one second to slow down and let the guy go across the street, and same thing too, like, kids will be trying to cross the street and, like, nobody, like, stops. And, I don't know, it's whatever, like, obviously, you know, things are different here than what I'm used to. But I think in, like, those kind of circumstances, or, like, if there's, like, some old person, like, crossing the street, like, just let them get across the street. Like, you can slow down for one second and let them get across so they're safe, and then you can still go on your way. And I, I just, I feel like it's, it's just the, it's just the way of, of how everything is here. So when I describe to it being here, it's very like libertarian, like liber libertarianist, in the terms, the way that things are structured, it kind of makes you, like you have to look out for yourself and like, you know, the people around you that you care about and that's it because, you know, there's not as many government programs here and people to help you. And what that does is it isolates everybody. Like people, people I think still care about other people, but not to the same extent, like in America, like, Say you saw a car accident, like people would jump in and rush in and try to help. Here that doesn't really happen. Like if you see an accident, what you'll see is a group of 20 people surround them and everybody pull out their phone. And it's just very much like everybody's just for me, for me, for me, for me. And I don't mean it in like a selfish way. I just mean that, again, I think it's just the situation. It's a different, you know, they don't, this country doesn't have as many resources and stuff as a country like America. So they're not as used to helping each other out. Like in America, you know, we pay our taxes and that goes to a lot of public services and people who don't have as much can get a little bit of a boost. While here that is, you know, not as prevalent. And again, so if you're, you know, if you're some rich Khmer person, it's easier for you to see some like poor Khmer person and be like, oh, I don't give a fuck, that's their life, like let them try to figure it out. While I think in America, a lot of people are, you know, more compassionate about that kind of stuff and are like, hey, we understand this person you know, doesn't have anything, so it's very hard to build yourself up from anything. So we're more uh, open to giving more to, you know, people who don't have as much. Um, and, you know, that's debatable on, on, on a couple of different levels. But you see that, like I'm saying, like, even in traffic, like, it's just like, I'm driving my moto, I don't give a fuck about anybody else around me as long as I can get to where I'm going. Um, and again, it's not, I'm not trying to say it's bad about the Khmer people, that they're selfish. It's just the way that the, the entire area the entire country, their entire way of life is just structured around that kind of, you know, I have to fend for myself because nobody else is going to look out for me kind of thing. Um, I don't know. All right, guys, this video is getting kind of long. So this is halfway broadcasting from around the world. Christmas is here. I got my hair cut and little things, little things in Cambodia that I noticed. All right, peace out, guys. Easy. Oh, yeah, check out the, uh, check out the Facebook. Don't forget, live feed uh, on Facebook every Sunday morning, my time. Uh, so check that out. Also, don't forget to go to 99 Moto Rental. Uh, get 10% discount on your motos. Uh, I'm going to have some more stuff like that coming your way very soon. 
uh, and also 99, men, road, not 99 Motor Rental just uh, opened a new location, but uh, I'm not going to spoil that yet. I'm going to have a uh, special just about that. All right, guys, halfway broadcasting around the world again. <laughs> peace, y'all. Peace.